Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today I want to talk about something very important, something that can save you from a lot of frustration and headache. And quite honestly, a topic that I don't think it's covered enough in the music YouTube world. And that is how and when to update your Mac OS and Logic Pro. And because as of this Monday, May 13th, 2024, we have a brand new version of Logic Pro, version 11, I think this is the perfect time to dive into this topic. I have a method that I've developed over my decade plus of being a full-time music producer and mixing engineer that is designed to A, prevent me from losing working hours to needless technical issues, and B, to always allow me to revert back to a previous system state. So here's how I think about it. First, when it comes to updating your Mac OS, I think it is always best to not be on the bleeding edge of every update. If your system is working and stable, don't be in a rush to change it. However, because of the walled garden of the Apple ecosystem, we do need to make regular updates so all of our devices play nicely together and so that we can keep all of our software up to date. So here's what I suggest. Do not update on the first version of a new Mac OS, also known as the dot zero release. Let's look at the OS numbering convention a little closer. In September of 2023, Apple released Mac OS version 14, also known as Sonoma. And they have released five major updates and five minor updates since then. You can determine which update type you have by looking at the full version number. For example, on February 8th, Apple released Mac OS Sonoma version 14.3.1. That first number, 14, denotes which version of the OS it is. The second number, three, tells us that this was the third major update to this version. And that last number one tells us that it was the first minor update to that third major update. The very first version of the new OS was numbered 14.0. And it's this version that you want to avoid updating to in order to prevent issues to your recording system. Although Apple software like Logic Pro may work well with the .0 updates, many third-party plugins and software will not. Because of this, I always like to wait until at least the second major update to download the new OS, the .2 version. This way I know there have been at least two rounds of bug fixes before I dive in. Plus you're very unlikely to lose any type of connectivity between devices just by delaying your update this amount. Sometimes you may receive an email like this from a third party developer. This one was from UAD warning me to not update to the 14.4 version of Sonoma because of a known issue. Always be on the lookout for communication like this when you're considering updating your OS and follow the manufacturer's instructions, especially if it's something super vital to your studio, such as your audio interface. Then be on the lookout for follow-up emails like these to confirm that the issue has been solved. Not every manufacturer will send these out when there's an issue, but they can be a good warning to look out for when considering an update, even if you're just updating from say a .3 to a .4 version. Be as sure as you can that all of your software is compatible with any major or minor update you plan to do to your computer. Don't just jump into an update without researching the compatibility of your most important pieces of gear and plugins. Check manufacturer websites, go on social media, talk to your friends, do your due diligence before you hit that update button. However, before we jump into the updating process, always back up your current system before updating. Always. You have to have the ability to revert to your old OS if something breaks. This is the cardinal rule when it comes to updating your OS. Now. This process has become way more complicated with the release of the Apple Silicon machines. For all their benefits, and there are plenty, backwards compatibility ain't one of them. It used to be super simple to create a bootable version of your Mac's hard drive and use that to revert to an older OS after updating. And if you're still on an Intel-based Mac, this is the process I recommend. Just create an exact copy of your Mac's internal drive to an external hard drive, and you can boot from that external hard drive and reverse the process if you need to. However, 
because of the new architecture and security protocols in the Apple Silicon machines, this easy workflow has been obliterated basically. There's still a way, it's just a bit more time consuming if you do need to revert to an old OS. Something you'll probably need to take a weekend day to do. Definitely something you can't do in between sessions. For starters, always download the install file for the OS to your hard drive instead of updating through the software update protocol that's in system preferences. Search for the OS you want to install in the App Store and download the installer to your applications folder. This way you can create a backup of the installer to use later if you need it. So for example, on my system here, I'm going to save the installer for Mac OS Ventura before I update to Mac OS Sonoma. Do note, you need to make a backup of this installer file on an external hard drive because it will be deleted from your internal hard drive automatically once you perform the update. Then you need to create a backup of all the files on your system. For backing up my system and all my external hard drives for that matter, I use an application called SuperDuper. I've also played around with Carbon Copy Cloner and they both work really well for me. Why not Time Machine you ask? Simply because I find SuperDuper and Carbon Copy Cloner it's easier to use and just more intuitive. Time Machine is a little too smart for its own good in my opinion. The idea of going back through multiple backups and having it run automatically in the background, it's great in theory, but it just doesn't integrate well into my own personal backup plan. And that's important, develop a backup plan that works for you. For me, that includes my main hard drives, clones of those drives stored in a fireproof box, and my cloud-based fail-safe Dropbox. For me, I just find it easier to plug in my external hard drive when I want to backup then open SuperDuper, set the source as my Mac Studio internal hard drive and the destination as my external backup drive. In the options, choose copy newer files so it doesn't take so long and then hit copy now. All pretty straightforward. When you're creating the backups of the files on your system, it works just like it used to. However, it's when we need to revert to an older OS that things get super complicated. And honestly, I think it's outside of the scope of this video to detail the exact process step by step, but just know it does require a clean install. So Macworld.com has an excellent article with a step-by-step -step guide to this process. I'll link it in the description box below, and I highly recommend giving it a read if you need to revert back to an old OS. Okay, so the OS is clearly the complicated piece, but... What about Logic? With successive updates of Logic, I find it's generally okay to download them when they come out as long as they're compatible with your current Mac OS. It doesn't require you to update your OS before you're ready to and have taken all these steps that I've outlined. As a big Logic fan, I always wanna see the newest improvements, the new features right away, so I'll generally update as soon as a new update comes out. However, things do go wrong when updating Logic and the .0 releases of Logic Pro can have bugs just like the .0 releases of an OS can. And I've heard plenty of stories of people's workflows being thrown off or outright ruined by an update to Logic. So before you hit that update button in the App Store, follow this process. Go to your Applications folder and find Logic Pro. Right click on the application and hit Compress. This will create a zip file of the Logic Pro application. Then create a new folder and title it with Logic Pro and the version number you are backing up. Then put your newly created zip file into this folder. Now, if you need to revert to the older version of Logic Pro after updating, simply go into this backup folder, unzip the zip file, and then drag the uncompressed Logic Pro application into your main applications folder, replacing the current version of Logic Pro. Simple as that. To recap, updating your system and Logic Pro are good things. They're not things to be feared, they're necessary things. However, they need to be done thoughtfully and with a bit of planning in order to prevent yourself from losing valuable hours to troubleshooting issues. Don't be on the bleeding edge of Mac OS updates. Wait until at least the .2 version to update. 
And don't update the day a new update is released either. Be on the lookout for emails and other communications, social media, word of mouth, etc., from third party developers warning about known issues before committing to any updates. Next, have a well established and reliable backup system in place for both your OS and logic. And back up your backups, whether that is another drive stored off site or some type of cloud based solution. Remember that old adage about data backup. If it doesn't exist in three places, it doesn't exist. And finally, don't be afraid to revert back to old versions if you experience an issue and wait for a new update that fixes that issue. If you take all of these steps, you can safely update your systems regularly and enjoy all of the new features of both Mac OS and Logic Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video and gained some insight on how to properly think through a system update. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.